the mother's knees. There's an uncontrollable greed as trees bleed from green to brown. Soon, no longer around, just dead ground, all fracked and fucked up and sucked up by capitalist misfits from a higher class with their heads up their arse in need of a stark remark by a harmless spark. I am a fully charged fire star. And I live in the afterglow. So know this. If I'm coming for you, then I'm coming for the truth. So you can't be root me or put me off track and distract me because I know exactly what strategy I'm using and in a less confusing way so I can say for sure with pure intention. Listen, prevention is the key to living happily. We need to stop. We need to stop unconditionally listening. We are allowed to be loud. We are allowed to be proud, to be loud and proud about being human. And securing a future where life is much looser, where laughter is free and a hard grafter can see a happy ever after, where help and care are driven. And where giving isn't seen as giving in. Now I ain't inciting a class war. I'm inspiring no war at all. Now you can call me mad, but who is it prophets from war-torn lands? Now I'm not a prophet or a holy man, but even I can understand that when a man kills a man for this green and pleasant land, then the blood is in the hands of the few. The few that choose to lose the lives they use. And then abuse the patriotism of a nation, still making mistakes as hearts break every day from the cold old folks to the broken veterans and the war widows, cast to the shadows of this world, little orphaned boys and girls torn from their mums and dads as we bombed Saddam and Iraq. Then we bombed Baghdad. And as the Middle East was overcome by grief, world leaders would meet and decide the price or cost of each life lost. So now, I am angrily demanding these leaders of yesteryear and the here and now, get up here, come on, take a bow, take a vow of truth and allow me to prove that proof of life has no price, but huge worth here on this earth and not in the world of hurt we are on cause for. This planet is sore. It's been ravaged and torn in a war for oil and dominant, but a predominant state, this isn't what makes us who we are. See, they can't phase us or make us break apart. Take a chance on your heart. Because it's usually right, you know, when you choose to fight all foes with reason and accountability. But words of freedom without stability fall on the cloth ears of those peerage peers in their expense accounts. Where no amount is enough to be pumped offshore. <laughs> no more. No more. Because we've got our calculators out and our abacuses are ready and we're incredibly telling them many. Yes, everything to everyone because our time has come to be the ones that changes things, exchanging things like haters for lovers and enemies for brothers. And we've got to stop. We've got to stop connecting their dots and protect what's plain to see. See, it's not as easy as one dot, two dot, three, all their dots from the start to the end and in between. No, draw your own future. Get used to knowing your neighbours by doing them favours for no reward, but that warm feeling that you get from believing in yourself again. Try to break away from those negative messages, oppressing the sensitive of nature in favour of the beast. And remember to reach. Reach for the stars. Why? Because they're ours. And with this positive charge, we have come so far, so now it's time to collect the correct taxes from these hedge fund bankers and the cunts and the wankers. Oh, sure. Swear box. <laughs> <laughs> the ones above the law. Where distance is an instant barrier between the laws of this land and the common man. So let's make this down together. Don't turn your back on depravity. See the reality. Feel the gravity and actually care. Yes, it's time that we comfort the scared. And we should entrench honour and respect as a matter of course. But our law courts enforce unjust deeds. So we are left all at sea. And will the BBC ever cover our screams? And no, believe me, this planet is done screaming and bleeding for the greedy. We should be screaming for the needy. Take the weak to belong on an even plane and say, no more. No more of the overprivileged pillaging and picking poor people's pockets to fund more rockets and drones. We are alone no more. We don't want more war. We might want to talk before we fight. 
Try something nice instead of a warhead led advance. Give love a chance for love's sake. There's so much heartache and pain in this world today, but please, believe me. There is more to see than war born poverty. And I want to be part of it. But not that half hearted part, you see. I'm a glass and a half, but I'm a class from the start. I'm ready to impart all I know. And I will go toe to toe. I will stand side by side. I will fight back to back. Fuck it, I'm out and attack from my side of the track. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's time that we fight. It's time that we win. And it's time that we cheer. And if you're buying, well then mine's a beer. <laughs> now, let's go straight into another poem. Um, I spent a lot of time writing about my own mental health, so we're just going to touch on that very, very quickly. Um, I, I got woke up by a woman called Kate Tempest. Do you know who she is, Kate Tempest? <laughs> I didn't mean she just like shook me while I was in bed and that. What I mean was I, I was told to watch one of her poems and, and it did, it woke me up. It stopped me sh standing shaking between an A behind a shaky bit of A4. And so I wrote this poem as a little bit of a, a head tip, a hat tip to her and, and Renegade. This is called Just a Man. These words we exchange, they're not shaped for the page. In fact, they have no form at all. They're geometrically nonsensical. They're still evolving into sentences as a dispenser's senseless shit. <laughs> There's my car. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm not. Because <laughs> there you are. Sipping wine from that jam jar Miss Kate Tempest, by far the best said in my view, all those gigs that you played and those rhymes that you made. I've touched the sun to be your renegade. But until then, what is it with this urge to purge my mind of the slightest thing it finds? If it needs saying, then I'm saying it. Displaying, then I'm displaying it. But with a definite dichotomy or something that's got to be held together by a bond that never breaks or mistakes bad from good. And if I could, then I'd smile. I'd make my life worthwhile. Shit, I didn't even have a go at happiness, but first I, I must confess that it's been so wrong since it all went wrong and Pete Tong is an underestimate and yeah, I did break. See, I went off the rails with all that entails. It's why my story carries traits of glory, pulsating and penetrating into my negatory and into my every early morning. Now there are days that my mind is soaring and I use those for exploring. But those days are as out of control and escalating as the ones that seem droll and decimating. Now, yeah, my life has become more fun until I come undone in front of everyone. So in the days that I can, I try to write without becoming contrived or trite, and I verge on the edge of polite. <coughs> Just think how much tonight's cost me so far. <laughs> I ain't got my pin, it's all right. <laughs> Look, I am trying to be the best man that I can. But when this renegade has fought his last crusade, then I guess you're left with just a man. Damn. Thank you. Woo! Right, I'm going to leave you with a, one more poem. I've been, um, I've, like, with this rhyming malarkey, I've um I've been lucky enough to uh, tour the country, Woo! But, thanks to the Arts Council. Yeah, yeah. I've got a clue what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Giving me fifteen thousand pounds. Wow, what are you thinking about? <laughs> but we, yeah, I know. <laughs> so this um I I I've, I've, I'm now um public in residence for Crisis, the homeless charity. Um, as a volunteer position, it's the first one they've ever had. Um. Now, there are things um, within the homeless society, and you ain't just got to be sleeping on the street to be homeless. Mm. You can be sofa surfing, standing at your 55 and standing at your mum's. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
This is a poem called Free, and, and it tries to highlight alcohol substance mis misuse and um, the way that it can either cause homelessness or, or just prolong periods of homelessness. So this is called Free. This world is so cold when you have no home. Very few friends and no warm clothes with old bones sore from cold stone floors and your sitting position. You are a coalition of dog friends and daydreams. You are a strong lager on top of cheap cider. But it's time to find a nicer narrative. One with a kindness activated additive before you die from the lack of it. You see, you're not to blame. Homelessness came into your life uninvited while you were fighting with a frightening mind and now you're relying on passers-by to find the cost of your first frosty jack of the day. Because it's that that takes you away from those small change exchanges and those copper requests as you dodge death before your coffee last birth. Now how can they dispute the destitute from their corner offices? they got to be stopped from causing more atrocities but on a street level. Like that devil with a notepad trying to find a broke lad for having no cash and no couch shift to crush it. I mean, I think that's really wrong. <laughs> Now I can see, you're just, sorry, I can see that homelessness wasn't in your five year plan. And I know that you understand that your pallor has become kind of ghoulish and you started scaring off the tourists and those in smart suits, those over the astute business executives and the iPod set to a collective set list of smooth tunes and cool vibes as they decide to pass you by and not to give. That's their prerogative. Now I can see you're just begging today. No songs filled with well-rehearsed verses because cash converters saw some worth in your tired old amp and your beat-up guitar so that you could buy some dog food. Maybe a couple of cans of special brew. You see, you've been trapped by ice-cold mornings following sub-zero nights as your eyes try to find another day of bended knee. They can see you are homeless. But they think that means free. Free to what? Free to what? Free to freeze. Free to feel starving. Free to be disregarded. Free to what? Free to beg for loose change. Free to pray for an end of days. Free to what? Free to hide inside libraries out of the cold. Free to eat food that's grown its own mould. Free to what? Free to what? Free to die in your 40s after drifting away from their daytime dash as another lost soul sings their cash. Free to what? Free to what? Free to wonder what went wrong before singing Elton John's sad song Say So Much. Free to hustle. Free to busk. Free to slowly lose trust. Now as cold nights draw in at the end of short days and this whole high street becomes a stage for obnoxious youths and prostitutes, half drunk yobs with loud mouth gobs and as one girl sobs, you hear another one laugh. But then as you pass past those footpath pikes, you are out of sight and you're out of mind. Tonight you're going to be just fine. Because a bottle of white lightning costs just... 379. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You're fucking awesome.